What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast, CBS Sports Daily NFL Podcast. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host. It is Friday, September 17th, and this is your Best Bets Podcast. Joining me to make picks for week two of the NFL season. They're not quite nuclear, but we're getting there. Team of RJ White and Pete Prisco. What's up, fellas? What's going on? What's up? Week two. Get week one out of the way. Let's get even week. Uh, we actually, you were exactly even last week, going three for three. Pete won the Texans, which I stole and used on our pal Nick Costas radio show. Thank you, Pete. Uh, the Baltimore Las Vegas over that looked dead in the water, and then it covered by like sixty points. The uh, Steelers at the Bills, a great call. They actually won outright. Losses were the Washington Football Team, the Chicago Bears, that was terrible uh, against Hall of Famer Matthew Stafford, and the Arizona Tennessee over, which is we all had and is just a terrible. Actually, RJ did not have that, but it was a uh, terrible, horrific beat. RJ, uh, t- much better on Sportsline than on the podcast. Sometimes that's just how it works. Two and five on the show. Uh, won the Seattle Indianapolis under. Great call. Texans, uh, winner outright. Smoked the Jaguars. Lost the Jets. Washington Lions. How did you? Oh, did you get screwed on the Lions number? We got yeah. I was a point away from pushing on both of those. We got we got a bad number on both of those on the pod. Not not Debo's fault or anything. It's just the the nature of when we record these podcasts. So if you waited on that 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 Lions pick and you got eight and a half or nine on Sunday, then yeah, you cash that, that. Come on, that was a you should have got that anyways. True, true. That is. I that. Mean, par, yeah, part of playing those big dogs though is getting that backdoor cover. Yeah, that would that one would have came from like uh, Kalamazoo. I mean, that's how backdoor that <laughs> yeah, that's right. uh, that's Somebody walked the back door about three houses down uh, and also lost the Chiefs and the Packers, which, wow, Green Bay. Uh, my, I went four and three. Wow, number one. Woo, first on the board. Yeah, the champion, week one. Yeah, but you put a teaser in yours, so we got to put a little asterisk. An early teaser, we got to put an asterisk next to it. It was, a, it was the easiest teaser on the on the planet. Although, <laughs> for a hot second, the Lions threatened to mess it up. Uh, I I won the Seahawks comfortably. The Dolphins. I remember taking the Dolphins. The Miami New England under. Sure, I'll take the Dolphins there. Um, and a Rams 49ers teaser. My losses were Washington, the Vikings, gross, and Arizona Tennessee. Over also gross. The can't lose parlay went one of four. One of four. That's not good. The Texans and then the other no. three were who's and, and the one that hit was the one you wanted to take out. Remember, <laughs> we were like, <laughs> "Oh, can't can't take the Texans out." RJ won't let me. I'm like, yeah, that's the one that won. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Um, all right, let's uh, let's you want to dive right in? We're gonna hit all the games. We're not nobody's leaving early. But um, I've got I've got. Uh, Radio show, to, or I mean, I got I to do TV in like an hour and a half, so we'll be a little bit faster than normal. We're going to start with the Bills and the Dolphins. Buffalo at Miami. The Bills, a three and a half point road favorite, despite coming in behind the Dolphins in the standings. The over under is 47 and a half. The last five Buffalo Miami matchups, Buffalo is five and zero straight up, and the over is five and zero. Sean McDermott, seven and one straight up against the Bill against the Dolphins as Bills coach. Josh Allen, 14, 5, and 2 against the spread in regular season road games. But Tua, 4 and 1 straight up and 5 and 0 oh against the spread as a dog in his career. Are you backing your boy, Josh Allen, Pete? Yes, I am. I, I think what happened last week was the Steelers had a great plan for Josh Allen. They didn't blitz him, which shocked the hell out of Brian Dable. He wasn't prepared for it, and Josh Allen wasn't prepared for it. Uh, but I think they bounced back here. I, look, Miami was fortunate to win the game last week. They fumbled late in the game. Uh, I didn't think Tua looked that good either. So I, I do think history, you know, five in a row, they'll make it six in a row. And, and I think they handle them by uh, a touchdown at least in this game. So I'll take Buffalo as one of my best bets minus the points. Miami's traditionally been underrated at home. Uh, you know, but like you said, they had a fortunate one last week. Um, I would lean that way, but I'm hesitant to play him as a best bet. Uh, Buffalo D played really well in week one. Um, it kind of counteracted some of the the sluggishness we saw from the offense. Um, you know, we did expect the offense to regress at least somewhat, I think, off of last year. You're just not going to play at that elite level year after year. So we'll see if they regress down to like a top 10 level or they stay in the top two or three or four. So uh, that's kind of, you know, yet to be seen. Miami does have a good defense though. Um, so Buffalo, I mean, they were, they were blitzing. It doesn't matter what the matchup was last year. They were just blitzing everybody on offense. So a little bit worried there. I think this line will get to three. So, so right now at three and a half, I would play Miami just hoping for that value. Um, but I don't love this either way. I love the bills in this spot. Uh, as Pete points out, the Steelers had a great game plan against Josh Allen. They got 22 pressures 
against the Bills and only blitz twice during that game. I mean, that is you're getting just. Pre- I, I think what it what what my takeaway from that Bills Steelers game, and I ended up watching it two more times, just because one one time I wanted to go back and look at it, and then another time it came on the TV, um, and. I, I just think the Steelers are going to be a lot better. We probably underrated the Steelers coming into the season and certainly the Steelers defense. Uh, Buffalo's defense looked to me like it was pre- it's prepared to take a leap back into the upper echelon of defenses. And if you look at the Dolphins, you know, they last year they ran 54% of their plays in man coverage. The Steelers ran 76% zone coverage against Josh Allen in week 1. If you know if Brian Flores changes it up and they go zone, we'll see what happens. But I expect that they'll go man, and that that sets up really well for Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, and that crew. Plus, I don't expect them to fall to zero and two. I like the Bills as a best bet as well. The Chargers are hosting the Cowboys. Los Angeles minus three and a half. The over under fifty five and a half. Uh, John Breach and I gave this out as a go bet this right friggin' now on Sunday's YouTube show, the early look ahead lines. It was 50 and a half open. By the time we finished watching Sunday Night Football, it was up to 52. And by the time I woke up the next day and forgot to bet it, it was at 55. It hadn't moved a ton since then. But man, DeMarcus Lawrence out, out for the next couple of weeks, months. Cowboys defense is not good. The Chargers defense might be better, but Derwin James questionable here. So is uh, Chris Harris, I think, Pete. There's a chance we could see some points in this one. Yeah, and it is one of my best bets. I know the number went way up, but uh, with all those injuries, and Randy Gregory's now in the COVID protocol as well. Uh, you know, the Cowboys offensive line's a little banged up. That's concerning, though, Lyle Collins. But uh, when you look at the Chargers, I think, uh, you know, Chris Harris will be able to play. Uh, that's the way it looks. But, well, you know, Derwin James is important to what they do. We'll have to keep an eye on that. They might have just held him out because it's the same. You know, he had a toe problem before. But, again, Herbert's going to light him up. The Cowboys stink on defense. And I think the flip side is I think the Cowboys will do what they did. They'll throw the ball around like they did against Tampa. So, uh, I'm I'm with the over. I think it's – I know the number's way up there now, but I still think it's going to go over. I'll take uh, a best bet on the over in this game. Yeah, I was impressed with Dallas in week one on Thursday, going toe-to-toe with the champs. And, and I don't know that the defense was terrible. I mean, they made some good plays on balls. And, and, and you know, I was a little bit impressed with them. And I, I know the Lawrence injury is going to be big, so I don't know that they, I can expect them to come out and be great. Um, and, and I don't know that they were going to win that matchup anyway because that Chargers O-line looked way better than it did last year. So, um, you know, that, that might be the strength of this team now. Uh, Chargers look like a good team versus Washington, but I don't know that they're markedly better than Dallas overall. And Chargers don't have home field advantage here. You know, they never do at home. And it was all the fans that you have. Of, uh, of the Cowboys in LA. I mean, it could be a Cowboys home game here. So um, it might be a net negative home crowd. So I think you need to have the Chargers as at least three and a half points better than the Cowboys to take them in this spot. And uh, I definitely don't. I think the Cowboys are, are a good team. So my best bet here is a Cowboys plus three and a half um, because even with those injuries, I think the value with Dallas, they're closer to the Chargers than what that line shows. Yeah. As you point out, this is not going to be. Remember the was it the Steelers game with the terrible towels, right? You might have just said that. Mm-hmm. I, I sort of blacked out. Um, I, I got the over as a best bet too. I know it's sort of square to take this, and there is some, you know, there is some concern that if you have a couple of instances where you get bad turnover luck in the red zone, or you get some missed field goals, or I don't know, Justin Herbert is you know going to throw a touchdown pass and the ball flies out of his hand, is ruled incomplete, but then is overturned and becomes a fumble in the end zone, which is exactly what happened against Washington, that this could backfire and it could end up going under. I don't care. I'm not, I mean, don't, don't, I mean, get in the way of this at your own risk because there's going to be points scored in this. If you watch that Washington uh, Chargers game, the Chargers could have scored 31 points. I I think they'll find a lot less resistance from the Dallas defense. Maybe Dallas's defense has improved. It's not improved enough to give me pause on taking the over here. I'll take the over 55 and a half. In fact, the only thing giving me pause is is me and Pete having the exact same uh, picks, two two best bets out of the gate, which is, I guess it's either. Yeah, that's kind of of scary because we're due to come back to RJ. That's true. Well, we're basically at 500. The Titans got their doors blasted by the Cardinals last week. An embarrassing effort. Taylor Lewan had to pin a tweet saying he got his ass kicked. And he's probably doing the tweet thing so to make noise so people didn't dig in and realize that it wasn't just Chandler Jones kicking his ass. Buda Baker treated him like a ragdoll at one point. And so Tennessee, people are 
understandably concerned about the Titans. They head to Seattle for the Seahawks home opener. First time the 12s will be in the stands in, in over a year. Seahawks are minus five and a half and the over under is 54, Pete. Yeah, I really like this game in a lot of ways. And first and foremost, watching the Titans on tape last week, they looked awful. It was almost like they were, you know, just sluggish. They looked slow. The the Cardinals played like they had 12 guys on the field on defense. Yeah, Luan had a bad day. You got to give him, a, you know, a little bit of a benefit of the doubt. He's coming off the ACL. I think he'll be better this week. And when I look at the Titans, I think they're going to go up there. Mike Vrabel's a good coach. He'll get that team refocused again. They'll score points in this game, and I think Seattle's going to score points. The Tennessee defense has major questions. We saw that again against Kyler Murray. Uh, Russell Wilson should be able to score points. But I think this game's high scoring and close. So for that reason, best bets two in this game. I'll Ooh. take the, the Titans plus the points, and I'm going to take the over in the game as two of my best bets. I should be looking Titans in this one. Look ahead was three and a half for the Seahawks and uh, it's up to six now. You know, uh, we, we got five and a half for this podcast, but it's ticked up to six since then. Who knows if it's going to stay there. But um, so I should be looking Tennessee, but they look so bad on their offensive line and the defense that I need to see something positive before before I jump in, you know, um, you know, all hands on deck there. Seattle dominated what I think is a pretty solid indie team last week. In fact, I think it's possible India is as good or better than Tennessee if, if these defensive and offensive line issues are, are key or for Tennessee moving forward um and if that arizona's loss indi- indicative in any way of what to expect moving forward so um seattle was two and a half or three point favorites at indy you would think this line would be at least seven if you have those teams as equivalent um so i do worry about a team with as good as weapons of tennessee backdooring a cover it's going to be high scoring like pete said so um rather than go with seahawks minus six especially i think i'm teasing it down on the podcast he's it down to a, a pick now um, but or plus 0.5 if you can find five and a half with pittsburgh get them down to around a pick uh, maybe plus 0.5, but check for a money line parlay on those. Depending on what your money line odds you get, you might get a money line parlay at minus 105, minus 110, as opposed to paying the minus 120, minus 130 you would on a teaser. So make sure you check that and put that one in if you're getting a better price there. Uh, Pete, I get the Titans thing. And there's, there's like a lot of lines out here that just stink. Like, I, I mean, I, what we saw in week one screams take the Seahawks. I mean, is that not, I mean, are you, do you think that, the, I mean, I, I get the Titans bounce back spot. I get the value that RJ's talking about. You're not worried that they're going to go up there with all this crowd noise. They can't fix the OL issues and, and you know, the line issues in one week. And you know, the Seahawks maybe have a good rush defense and, and this new offense for the Seahawks looks like it's going to flambe or Suve or something. I just think there was, when you looked at the Titans offensive line, Luan was coming off the ACL. And so I'll give him a game to get, kind of going again. And the right guard had one of his worst. Nate Davis was awful. I mean, he had one of his worst days ever. And and I don't think he's as bad as he played. So I think they'll be okay. Look, Seattle rushed the passer last week. They did a nice job. But, and let's see him do it again. So that's why I think it's going to be high scoring. That's why I think the Titans hang around uh, in this game. Because, I mean, look, they're good, tough, physical football team. I think they hang around. All right. Fair enough. I think they get their doors blown off. Well, then put it in as a best bet, big mouth. <laughs> I don't need to. I, I put all. I, put, I, put all the, I had all this list of best bets I put together, and then I realized that it was it was all favorites who had looked good in week one. It just, it, it just. If I'm looking at all these lines, I'm like, oh my god, this is so easy. Just take all these favorites that dominated week one against these teams. It 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 it, it reeks of a major regression sto- major storyline regression from week one just elastic bounce back and and then all of a sudden i'm like i'm two for ten they're like two for 14 on the week because i took all these favorites yeah the uh I'm, I'm looking at my super contest because the lines come out wednesday night and uh yeah the, the ones i feel the safest in are all favorites and i'm like i've got to make some 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 of these dogs in because it's just you're not going to have all these teams looking as good as they did in week one i know when i did my picks i had a lot of favorites but i also i sprinkled in some dogs i like too i mean there there are some well, I'll say this, uh, and I'm, I might add um, a best bet here. This is definitely going to be the first pick in the parlay, but it's Bears minus two and a half. At, uh, Bengals at Bears, Bears minus two and a half. The over-under is 45. Both teams, we saw the over-hit in week one. The Bears actually have the worst against the spread record, record in the NFL since 2019, going 12-21 and 21 against the number after having the best record in the NFL in Matt Nagy's rookie year, 12-4. and four. Andy Dalton. 
one and O oh in ADRGs. In case you don't know what those are, that's an Andy Dalton revenge game. He beat the Bengals 30 to seven last year with the Cowboys. And, uh, but he did have the second fewest air yards per attempt last week, 4.3. The only guy who's lower, uh, I think it might have been Jameis Winston. And the, 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 what's interesting about this too, by the way, Bengals last week, dead last in expected pass in, in pass rate over expectation which is sort of a red flag uh, for Zach Taylor, but maybe they're just trying to ease Joe Burrow in. Uh, Pete, you think a little Andy Dalton revenge game? You feeling that? Uh, I do. And it, yeah. look, I don't think they're as bad as they looked against the Rams. Um, you know, they hung around a little bit in that game. I, I, defensively, there are some cur- concerns in the corner. I get it. Uh, but it's not like, you know, the Bengals looked good last week in, in beating the Vikings, but – the, the Vikings dominated the second half. I mean, they came back in that game and and really got back in the game in the second half. So I think the Bears are going to hang around uh, in this game for a while and then pull away in the in the fourth quarter. And win. it's going to be an ugly game. I think they win by you know a touchdown, maybe five, four or five points. So I'll, I'll lay the points as one of my best bets. I'll take the Chicago Bears, and I can't believe I'm saying that, but I'm taking the Bears. I think Pete's exactly right. We get this under three. I love Chicago here. I was encouraged a lot by what I saw from the Bears before they fell apart in the second half. This is obviously an easier matchup for them than what people think could be a Super Bowl team with the Rams. Uh, Bears had no three and outs against many people's number one defense. You know, that that's a key thing. They're gaining, I think, at least 21 yards on every drive. Now, they didn't put a ton of points on the board, but they're not getting stymied right away. So um, they're, they're, I don't, the offense might not be that bad. Defense might not be as bad. Uh, Peters had a limited practice on Wednesday. Makes me think he has a good shot of playing. They're obviously in a better spot if they're not having to go down even further on the depth chart for their, their left tackle. Um, so Bengals won outright as a home dog. Played a full extra period due to overtime. So now it seems like a perfect time to fade him here, especially with this dropping from the look ahead of three and a half with people kind of on the Bengals bandwagon. So I'm also best bet uh, with the Bears minus two and a half. Throw it in, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have it as a best bet coming into the podcast, but I really like the Bears. Throw it into the parlay. We'll make it part of the, the can't lose parlay, the, the first leg there. And this is a great spot to take a team that I don't like in the Bears, but a team that, as you guys, as we point out, week one overreaction will be people thinking the Bengals have got it figured out. And they took down Minnesota at home. You know, J- Jamar Chase learned to catch a football. Very proud of him. Joe Burrow slinging it around. Joe Mixon looks like a workhorse. But to me, the Bengals' a plan of attack, which again is to run, they, they were you know, ran a ton, kind of plays into the Bears' hands. If you want to attack the Bears, you need to go up top on them because their secondary is very suspect. Bengals' pass rush, not, not terrible, but not necessarily elite and that's you need an elite pass rush and an elite aerial attack is how you take down the bears because their offensive line and secondary isn't very good i like chicago in this one to they'll get back to one and one and people will probably settle down a touch on the Bengals. Uh, pete do you think they're gonna are they easing joe i mean do you think they're easing joe burrow in here they kind of have to be right he didn't look like he was eased in that much the other day i mean they, they he looked fine I mean, he threw right. the ball around. He looked, you know, it was. He was a little hesitant in the preseason because people around his legs. And once you get the real games, you screw, you know, go play. And I think he was fine. And the right. whole thing about Jamar Chase, like I said, always say, I'll take a guy who gets open and drops once in a blue moon, and rather than a guy who can't get open and can catch everything. And it's also preseason drops. Like settle down, everybody. It's not. This is not indicative. It's of practice. It is. Also, he became basically the steal of every fantasy draft because he fell three rounds because people were panicked about preseason drops, and now he looks like he might be a stud. Texans at the Browns. Browns minus 12 and a half, the over under 48. This is despite the Texans. The Texans go and kick Urban Meyer's ass so much that people were wondering if he's going to leave the Jaguars after one week to go coach USC. He says no, but he didn't say it very convincingly. You like the Browns or the Texans here, Pete? I like the Texans. I, I'm, you're giving me 12 and a half points. I'm taking the Texans. I, I think when you I, and, and rewatching that game a couple times on, on the game and then on tape, uh, they they've improved on the offensive line. I know they didn't run the ball a ton. They, they had a lot of yards, but it was you know the yards per carry wasn't great. But they they did control the clock and defensively they were better than I thought they would be. So I know Jacksonville's not good, but I just think in this spot, Cleveland put a lot into beating Kansas City last week on the road. I know it's their home opener, but 12 and a half points to me is way too many. I think Taylor will make enough plays with his legs to make it interesting. Uh, I'll take the 12 and a half as one of my best bets. I'll take the Texans. 
Yeah, I made this Browns minus 10 in my power rating, so I think it's too high, but I'm not rushing out to back Houston like I was last week. Um, it's probably a stay away from me. Texans played way better than anyone expected. Who knows how much of that was Jacksonville? I think a lot of it probably was. And Browns impressed last week, but it could be a come down spot. This is a clear, you know, sleepy spot after beating beating what everybody thinks could be a Super Bowl team or um, pl- sticking with what, I, what could be a Super Bowl team and almost beating them. And now you get to play Houston, who everybody thought was terrible. So probably a stay away. I was thinking maybe the over, expecting some garbage time scoring from Houston. Cleveland has injuries to the offensive line and Beckham. So I'm going to back off of that a little bit because who knows how many points they're going to score in this game if they don't have to get in a shootout. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think that you're that's a that's a fair point. Cleveland might try and ease back. I, there has to be a letdown spot a, a bit after that Kansas City game. It's just in, almost impossible not to uh, imagine that at some point. You know, I mean, the, I've got Cleveland that I picked. When you look at it, it's just 12 and a half is so many points. The one thing that worries me is you can probably be able to run on – on the Texans. I mean, you should be able to run okay on the Texans. And Cleveland's going to do that. You can attack them with that offensive line. It feels like there could be a late jailbreak from Kareem Hunter, Nick Chubb to cover the number. And then the, the Texans want to run the football as well. I, I'm i pretty sure Cleveland's defense, especially on the run defense, might be improved this year. And I, we'll see how that bears out over the course of the next few weeks. Uh, Tyrod Taylor, this is insane. He is on a 7-0 and against the spread run with four different teams. I mean, what the hell? How is that a thing? Baker Mayfield, 8, 15, and 1 against the spread in his career as a favorite. And the Browns would have covered last year against Houston had Nick Chubb not. I mean, so maybe there won't be a jailbreak late. Um, RJ, what if? how high would this have to get for you to actually bet the Texans? 14? 14. Okay. So if you're listening on the weekend and, you know, Browns keep building and building and people are laying the 12 and a half and it gets up to 14. If you see a 14, there's probably going to be pushback too. Like 14 is just a, a, such a, it's not a key number. Cause I mean, it is a key number, but it's a pretty rare key number uh, to see on that line. So if, if you're, if you're listening on the weekend and you see a Cle- uh, Texans plus 14, that's a pretty, pretty good bet right there. Right. There's 13, 13 on the look ahead. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's come down a little bit cause Houston looks solid. Um, so we'll, I don't know if it's going to go back up, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, by the way, Cleveland, two and two against the spread as a double digit favorite since returning to the NFL. It's just the fifth time in Brown's history they will be a double digit favorite. The 49ers, my 40. What is Kyle Shanahan doing? He's playing games, isn't he, Pete? This Brandon Ayuk stuff and this Trey Sermon business. Well, I mean, clearly he wasn't happy with him. So mean, something happened. Something happened. Something happened. What Trey Sermon didn't lose out to Eli Mitchell. No, but he, I'll tell you what, I, I was watching that game this morning. Eli Mitchell looked really good running the football. He really did. I, I mean, Peter Ayuk was awesome last year. He didn't lose out to um, – You're just mad because you have Trey Sermon in about 22 fantasy leagues. Just say it. I'm mad because I have Trey Sermon in about 29 fantasy leagues. Yes, I am very <laughs> mad. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the 49ers are minus three on the road. At Devo's Eagles, the over-under is 50. You tell, are, we, are you impressed? You, if you did, you watch the Eagles game again, Pete? Eagles Falcons. I did. Game? Uh, I was. They had a good plan. You know, all those people that killed Nick Sirianni because his press conference wasn't very good. Um, he was outstanding on uh, in calling the game the other day. I think they had a really good plan against the Falcons. Now the Falcons aren't any good, uh, but but it was a good plan. The offensive line held up. I think defensively they looked like they were better. And and so add it all up. I'm I'm taking the Eagles in this spot. You have you know a 49ers team that's playing. Two road games to open the season. I know it's not a ton of travel because they stayed over, but I, when I look at this, I, I just think that the way the Eagles played will keep them in the game. And, you know, the 49ers have all those injuries. There's, you know, the corners injured now too, Verrett out for the year. So I think that those are going to play into the Eagles' strengths. I don't think the Eagles just cover this game. I think they win it outright. I think if you're taking the Eagles, you got to get three and a half. Um, you know, that number has been out there throughout the week. And so I wouldn't play it unless it was three and a half. My best bet's the other way. Uh, since we're getting three, I like San Francisco. I don't put too much sock in the 49ers letting Detroit back into the game with the backup defense on the field. And I don't want to overrate how good Philly looked against a bad Atlanta team. But any any performance against any team on the road like that, you have to kind of stand up and, and take notice of that because it, it is notable. Um, that defense def- defensive front of San Francisco is a much tougher test for the Philly O-line. So this is kind of really where the Philly season starts for me. I thought Atlanta was 
was going to be bad before the season. I thought Philly was a little underrated before the season. And Hurts now gets to see a massive upgrade in quality of the past defense overall. We'll see how he deals with that. Um, it is the second straight game out East for San Francisco. They've had success in that spot the last few years. They've actually had a um, an East Coast road trip twice uh, each year early in the season, once in weeks one and two, once in weeks two and three. And they just, you know, destroyed in, in, in those spots in the second game. So not worried about the travel at all. Um, a week ago, everyone thought San Fran was elite. Philly was maybe the worst team in the division. Philly definitely deserves an upgrade after last week. This line, I don't think, should be less than three. So, And it's not going to get under three. So I think we're getting value here with San Fran at three. And uh, if you want to take the Eagles, wait for that three and a half. The... 49ers stayed in West Virginia this game, and the Niners are seven and one straight up and six and two against the spread since the start of 2018 in Eastern time zone games. Uh, they are also 0 and six against the spread and one and five straight up in their last six games as a favorite. 49ers 9 18 and one as a favorite under Mike Kyle Shanahan. The yeesh. Uh, Jalen Hurts, first player in NFL history with a thousand pass yards and 250 plus rush yards in his first five NFL starts. And fun fact Kyle Shanahan has never beaten the Eagles. I, I don't have a best bet on this game. Well, I do actually have a best bet on this game. What am I talking about? The over. Love the over in this game. Uh, the Eagles uh, front is is dangerous. The Eagles are really good on the offensive line and the defensive line. I think it's a, I just think it's a good matchup of San Francisco being able to take shots over the top. I'm convinced that Brandon Ayuk and Trace Irvin are going to come out and be starters this week and get significant snaps and that their punishment. I think, I think they did something. I don't know if they went out partying and missed curfew. And I'm just wildly speculating here. I'm not. This is not an informed opinion. Uh, but something happened where Kyle Shanahan felt the need to either punish them or take them down a notch. And he is. He's gonna. I think. I, I think he felt he could beat the Lions without them. And now they're going to be a major part of the game plan. Now maybe I'll be wrong. I'm wrong all the time. Like if he, if Trey Sermon's inactive again, I'm probably just going to move to Montana and never talk to anybody ever again because I'll feel so stupid. But um, and I'll be. Out some he cat. won't be an, he won't be inactive this week. I promise I, you. Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, so I'll take the over. I think there's a lot of points scored in this game. I, I was really, really impressed with Nick Sirianni's game plan. I mean, it's so like you said, Pete. It's so stupid. Like, what are we judging guys from their you know guys or their timing of the hire or their press conference? Like, you know, Bruce Arians like worst hire when he was hired by the Cardinals, and you know ends up you know they become great. Nick Sirianni doing rock paper scissors in his press conference or or you know mumbling along. Who cares? If he knows football, he knows football. And he had a great game plan for Jalen Hurts. Now, maybe the Falcons are hot trash and the 49ers steamroll the Eagles. Uh, I just think there are going to be some points in this game. So I will take the over. All right, let's Belichick take a- hasn't won a press conference in his life. That's a good point. Well, on to Cincinnati, it was a win. Cincinnati. Eh. Everybody made a big deal out of it, but you know what I mean. He doesn't win. No, no, I know what you mean. Um, all right, let's take a break. When we come back, can Lamar Jackson finally solve the riddle? That is the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs at the Ravens Sunday night football. Thank goodness we got Cowboys Chargers on CBS. Otherwise, this would feel like a like we got hijacked. This is a good game. Over under 55. Whew, so robust. And the Chiefs are three and a half point favorites in Baltimore, Pete. Yeah, this this game to me is one of those where you have it sets up perfectly for Patrick Mahomes. And, and the reason I say that is because they blitz. That's all they do. That's all they know how to do is blitz. And he eats the blitz alive. And I just don't see the Ravens changing who they are. And so for that reason, I think he's going to light them up. I also think Lamar Jackson will be better than he was. He wasn't good last week throwing the football. And, and you know, there are reasons for it, but he was not good throwing the football. Uh, but I do think this will be a high scoring game. And I think when you look at it, I think that the Chiefs will go in there and win the game, but there's going to be a lot of points scored. The Chiefs' defense had some issues last week at times, so I'll take uh, the Chiefs minus the points, but I also think it's going to go over the number. I, I think my numbers say that Baltimore, you know, just as a team rating is a value here, I think it's going to inflate. They're probably going to inflate to a point where I might take them, but, but you know, what Pete said about the, uh, the matchup here, it just is not great for that Baltimore defense. So not rushing in to take him here. I'm staying away from this game. I typically hate backing a team coming off, you know, that overtime loss on Monday, but it feels like this is a must win for Baltimore. Um, Casey certainly sees this as a big test as well. They were a bit lucky to come away with a win after how that game went. Um, probably don't have the same level of desperation as Baltimore with all their injuries. Um, so Casey, I 
absolutely dominated Baltimore last year. You know, Baltimore has been hungry for payback circled on, on the, uh, you know, the, the calendar all off season. I do worry about Baltimore's injury shuffling around the offensive line, obviously the, the secondary injury. So um, I don't have any trust in Baltimore. I'm, I'm going to stay away from this one. Yeah, I probably stay. I mean, I'm staying away now. I almost certainly will bet it on Sunday night unless I'm again, you know, like, Right, right under, right under the payout line, and I'll definitely bet it if I'm right, you know, right around the payout line uh, in a good way. Uh, certainly, we'll have some DFS action, and you can, you know, you can check. Make sure to check out. By the way, make sure to check out Fantasy Football Today in Five and uh, and all the and all the DFS stuff that they do. What also, is your payout line? Twenty grand. I wish. That could. I you think I got twenty grand in credit out here? What do you, what do you think is happening? <laughs> check, check out fantasy football today, uh, today DFS. It's a new DFS. That's podcast. what it is. Not not just the five the five because there's a <laughs> fantasy football today, which you get in all the great fantasy advice, hour long episodes every every day. Um, you get the fantasy football on five, which is your catch up if you don't have time for a whole hour of fantasy advice. And then those DFS uh, podcasts twice a week on fantasy football today DFS. We got Mike McClure, who's a genius at this stuff, Sina Jad yeah. and Frank Stample, and they uh, you know I've listened to every single episode so far. Help me build some lineups help me cash in the uh that showdown slate with with the raiders uh on monday so so great stuff there um pete speaking of fantasy football today how do you feel about jamie eisenberg using his platform and in theory as a journalist his start of the week to try and curse to try and put the a mush a jinx on my guy matthew stafford but he did he's not making him the start of the week he did yeah, but he included that. him anyway just to try to mess with me like he, you know, he, he, told, just, he just he just told you that. I mean, after what happened to Raheem Mostert last week, anybody who's the start of the week is going to go run for the high hills. I, mean, I know. Yeah, gosh. I'd be paying. No, don't do it to me. <laughs> like, like Jamie should start asking NFL players if they want to give him a thousand dollars to not be the start of the week. I mean, Raheem Mostert blew out his kneecap as the week one start of the week, or as we like to call it, the sorry of the week. You know who it is this week? It's Ben Roethlisberger. Bye, Ben. See ya. Oh, crap. <laughs> uh, and I like the Steelers, too, this week. Damn it. Uh, speaking so, of. <laughs> yeah, speaking of, uh, the Raiders are at the Steelers. The Ste- oh, by the way, speaking of promotional things, before we get to that, good segue there, RJ. If you're watching on YouTube and you can get this picks pod shortly after we recorded on Thursday, I've had I've had a bunch of people actually reach out. Um, my buddy Josh Soldine is a good friend of mine who uh, lives up in the Midwest, Was is going to He's flying in to see his folks and go to the state game on Saturday, but then he's going out to Vegas for a convention. So he's asking when this picks pod was going to post because he wanted to listen on the way out there and then make some bets when he got out to Vegas. Legal gambling, of course. Um, so if you like this podcast and you feel like you need the information earlier, you can get it on YouTube, youtube.com slash pick six. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit the like button, smash the like button, leave a comment, leave your best bet of the week. And hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a ton. The Raiders at the Steelers. The Steelers are minus five and a half. The over under is 47. Big bid. And the, and the Pittsburgh Steelers, as Ryan Wilson has repeatedly told me this week, have struggled against the, the Raiders, whether it's Oakland or Las Vegas. Big Ben is one and six against the spread and two and five straight up in his career versus the Raiders. Derek Carr. Well, anyway, all right, Pete, you, what do you think about this game? Well, you know, it's the curse of the immaculate reception for the Steelers. Oh. There you go. So they've always struggled with the Raiders, but I don't think they're going to struggle here. This sets up perfectly for Pittsburgh. You have a team that won its home opener in front of fans for the first time ever in the new stadium. Short week traveling against a team playing a home opener. That's a bad combination. So I know the Steelers' offense did look good for a lot of that game. But I thought they came on later. Roethlisberger made some throws. I know they had the block punt, but they looked better in the fourth quarter. And that defense was suffocating. Uh, you know, look, you hit Carr in the mouth, and I, and I think he's a different quarterback. I think the Steelers will get after him. So I'll, I, I know I'm bucking history here, but I'll lay the points with the Steelers. Yeah, I, everything you said is correct. I have this as a best bet. Steelers minus five and a half. I have this as a best bet under 47. And as I mentioned, it's part of the, the teaser I had earlier. Fading the Raiders after that emotional home opener. They lost Enzo Good, downgrading the offensive line. The, you know, that they have several injuries they're dealing with. Not only playing on a short week on Monday night football game, also had to play overtime in that game. So it's it's extra game time for them, extra late night out there. Now they got to go East for for a 1 p.m. start. Uh, Vegas crowd elevated the Raiders in their first game. I thought it was going to happen. I talked about it on the podcast. That's why I like them. And uh, they're probably not as good as they showed last week. Steelers defense shut down an elite offense in week one. 
at home, I doubt they give up much to the Raiders offense here. I think they're going to give Carr a lot of trouble, like Pete said. Uh, I didn't like what I saw from the Pittsburgh offense earlier, but this is certainly a matchup where they can have success, and Ben can throw for 300 yards and and cash in as the start of the week because I know I'm going to have him in some some DFS in some leagues. So hopefully he he catches in for all the, the, that and for all my best bets because I have a ton on the Steelers this week. I have a ton on the Steelers as well. The, the, honestly, the only thing that concerns me about this game, not the history of the Raiders, and the Steelers, not not Big Ben's lack, lack of success against the Raiders. It's Jamie Eisenberg. That's my only worry about this game. <laughs> is that Jamie's made Big Ben the start of the week, and that Big Ben's gonna slip on slip on a patch of like a, like an oil spot, walking to the stadium and shatter his elbow as he lands on the ground and and just be out for the year. That's my only concern because that's how strong Jamie's jinx powers are. Derek Carr on Monday night. Five of 15, zero touchdowns, and one interception when pressured. The Raiders' off- offensive line is fine, but it ain't great. And the Steelers, again, as I mentioned when we were talking about the Bills, they got 22 pressures with just two blitzes. They are going to get home with, more than likely, four guys up front. And if they do that, that's going to leave them the ability to bracket Darren Waller in the back end and force Derek Carr to get the ball out quickly to guys like Henry. And I just don't I, – I, he doesn't play well under – he doesn't play well when he's pressured. The Steelers are now – what's that? Oh, who says them? The Steelers are now 1-0, and they're going – and they were on the road. That home crowd is going to be loud, and the Raiders are on a short week in traveling. This is a smash spot for the, for the Steelers. So I'm going to add an extra bet. I have the under as a best bet as well. I, I think the Raiders are going to score like 13 points here. Uh, I'll take the Steelers too. By the way, real quick on Jamie Eisenberg, uh, today we're taping on a Thursday. Mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken, today is a holiday, a religious holiday. It, it is. It is. Not it allowed is. To, and he's not allowed to eat today. Oh. So what are we going to do, me and you, Will? What we're going to text him pictures of food. And I couldn't eat for a couple of days. <laughs> he sent me pic- You two sent me pictures of food. And I wasn't allowed to eat. So he's not allowed to eat. So he's going to get so many pictures of food later in the afternoon that we're going to just – uh, just and, and make him so hungry that he's going to be torturing himself. I'm gonna. I've got a picture. It's not even my picture, but I've got a picture of a uh, this place called the Provision Company that somebody sent me. This chicken sandwich, and it's covered in like onions and peppers and melted cheese on top, and it looks so delicious. I'm, I when we get done with this podcast, I'm sending it to the thread just to. In- you get Jamie on these. You get him over that two or three o'clock where he hadn't had lunch. Whoo boy. You know what you put on the tech on the the text that you accompany with the picture and the attachment? You put start of the week every time. <laughs> That's right. Man. Start of the week, juicy. S O T W sandwich of the week. That's what you do. Sandwich of the week. The Saints minus three and a half at the Panthers over under forty four and a half. Both these teams were two and zero to the under last week. Jameis, the first player ever with five touchdowns and less than one hundred fifty passing yards. Panthers, interestingly. Tied with Arizona for the most sacks in football last week with six Saints, zero sacks allowed. But now Eric McCoy is out. Carlos Ruiz will be filling in at center. And Darnold, Sam Darnold, his first game post Adam Gase, completes 69% of his passes, 279 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Pete, are you buying with Sean Payton selling? Well, I think they did a really good job last week. I mean, I, I give a lot of credit for that defense. They had questions. You know, the the, the kid, the, the rookie corner from Stanford, and Debo played a really good game on the corner, and they locked down the receivers. Um, this line's concerning to me a little bit. After what the Saints did last week, and Carolina looked better on defense, I get it, but this line is a little bit concerning. I'll take the Saints only because I think their defense will play well again here, but I don't love this at all and probably would lean to the under if I had to pick it. A couple losses for the Saints on defense too with Davenport her with Lattimore out. And I know they're getting ropey. So that's that that they're, you know, you're at least covered it somewhat on the cornerback slot. But but losing Lattimore is a big deal. This line was pick them on the look ahead. And since Carolina didn't play poorly, it's all tied into how New Orleans looked. And everybody, you know, is pumping up that New Orleans rating now. Is that the New Orleans team we're gonna get week in and week out? I think it's unlikely. I think if we see that team week in and week out, they're a Super Bowl contender. And I don't think anybody's rushing out to bet Super Bowl tickets on James quite yet. I think that young Panthers defense is making a leap. I thought it would happen at some point this year. Looks like it's already happening. Zero points allowed on the first nine drives for the Jets. Um, that offense for Carolina is going to be a tough matchup for most teams as long as McCaffrey is healthy. I know you have good corners who can lock up receivers, but there's not really much you can do defending McCaffrey. He's just going to get his. Um, 
So I talked about the New Orleans defense injuries. I think there's a great chance the market moved this line too far based on the quality of New Orleans' win. Um, I give the Panthers a decent shot at winning this game. If, if you're going to take them, uh, which I am, best bet here, make sure you're getting the hook like we are. Carolina plus three and a half is one of my best bets. I have the Panthers as well, plus three and a half. And this is a situation, R- well, RJ, I would ask you this. So as you can see on Caesars right here, it is Saints minus three, minus 120 which means that the line is likely to move. Its next move would, in theory, be to three and a half, or you know, if it evened out. With the Panthers plus three, plus 100, or is this a situation where you would be okay buying half a point? No, it's it's been available three and a half. Get it three and a half. Shop around and get it three and a half if you need to or wait. Um, but yeah, you you shouldn't need to do that because it's going to move back. It's no nobody's going to thinks this line is going down any further than this. So at some point, three and a half is going to pop back up. Just keep looking and make sure you get it at three and a half. Okay. So, all right. So, but I guess I'm, I guess I'm asking, all right. So let's say you plug this in at three. Debo, plug that, hit, click that plus three real quick. Cause I want to see what they, what the offering is uh, with juice wise. So you get plus three, we scroll over, you hit that little drop down and let's add a point, add a half a point there. You can buy Carolina Panthers plus three and a half. You can watch this happening with the lot, the magic of internet television on YouTube. So you would rather wait for three and a half plus three and a half because at Caesars you have to it goes to minus one plus three and a half minus one twenty so you're saying wait it'll pop back up and take it then all right okay cool all right that's no, I'm fine just curious uh the don't yeah, pay, pay, I, I even even off of three don't pay twenty cents for a, for a line move like that's just way too much yeah that's no, no, no I'm just trying to inform the listener not not myself I of course knew that I would never buy a half a point for twenty cents <laughs> I mean I'm a I'm as sharp as they come sharp as a butter knife over here uh, anyway. I am back in the Panthers too, and I like the under a lot. I feel pretty stupid for not getting the under at 47, which is where it opened. I don't know if I love it at 44 and a half. I just don't think they're going to be a ton of points in this game. The Saints look, they're, they're more explosive than we thought down the field, but Sean Payton is trying to be cautious here with Jameis Winston and tread lightly and doesn't want him to get into situations where he's rushing and hurrying and, and forcing things. The Panthers also are going to protect Sam Darnold. This is a much, much more difficult test against the Saints front seven and front four than it was against the Jets. You were going to see them pepper Christian McCaffrey with short yardage targets. They are not afraid to be methodical. Maybe we'll see some shots down the field. But I think actually maybe it was Sam Darnold who had the lowest uh, 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 whatever, uh, lowest yards, depth for, target. yards for attempt. Yeah. Yeah. Was it the lowest? Yeah, he had the lowest air yards of anybody in the NFL. The, the Panthers are not going to be aggressive with him. They want him to get some confidence, and this is a much more difficult defense. So I, I like the under, but I think the Panthers keep it close. The Patriots, minus six at the New York Jets. The over-under is 42. Mac Jones is the first quarterback in the Super Bowl era to be favored in weeks one and two of the regular season in his rookie year, which is wild. The under was 2-0 for these teams in week one. Zach Wilson was sacked six times, pressured on 51% of his dropbacks. That's second most in the NFL in week one. And now uh, Makai Becton, who did not look like he was in great shape last week, is out for the foreseeable future with a leg injury. Bill Belichick, 26-6 and straight up against rookie quarterbacks in New England. Does he make it 27-6, and Pete? Yes, he does. And and look, uh, Mac Jones did some really good things. I, I thought Zach Wilson responded because he didn't play well for three quarters, but he showed up in the fourth quarter, made a couple throws. But the Patriots are a much better team. And you, you mentioned that the offensive line was bad last week for the Jets. The offensive line for the Patriots is really good. And I think that's going to be the difference in the game. Mac Jones will have time to throw it. I don't think Zach Wilson will. He'll turn the ball over a couple times. Uh, I'll lay the six points on the road and take the Patriots. Yeah, the, the, it's road divisional game. Six points is a lot. You know, I'm supposed to like the Jets here. Uh, look ahead was Patriots minus three and a half, and Patriots lost. I mean, it's not like they went out and blew the doors off like the Saints did. I mean, um, Jets played worse than expected, so that's part of the adjustment too. But, you know, if Patriots are going to lose in week one to Miami, uh, I don't know why you move this up two and a half points. Um, they did outplay them, though. They were done in by turnovers. I'm not saying we should be downgrading their rating, um, but it was, this upgrade might be a little too steep for me. Um, so I'm definitely not playing the Patriots. If I had to lean, I lean to the Jets. I think the line should probably be, you know, four, four and a half, but I don't have confidence in the Jets with what they showed last week. Uh, so I'm not going to play it. I'll take the Patriots as the best bet. Uh, and for a couple of reasons, one Patriots are a better team Two, 
Bill Belichick just lost at home to Brian Flores. He's not, he, he is not going to be interested in keeping in like letting this team get to own two in the division or even flirting with it. Three, you're going to see a bunch of funky defensive coverages and a bunch of pressures headed Zach Wilson's way. And I think it's going to throw him off. He, he looked good. I thought, I thought that second half against the Panthers, that was very impressive. But while as good as Carolina's defense might be, and I agree with you, RJ, that they're sort of breaking out earlier than we thought they might, New England's defense is going to be better, at, at least just in terms of the ability to not let a rookie quarterback with a live arm just storm back in the second half. I think the New England Patriots will lean on the ground game. They'll let Mac Jones make some plays. This game is going under, which worries me a little bit. But I like the Patriots minus six. Also, I heard Tom Curran of NBC Sports Boston do. I saw his uh, great, great Tom's awesome, um, great reporter for the for the Patriots. But he did a hit on the show on some show on I think it was Wednesday night, and he said if the Patriots don't win in blowout fashion, he will shave an eyebrow. That is not something that you would do unless you felt very confident. So I'm going to back and this, I'm going to back Tom Curran and his, and his eyebrow wager. What do you think about that? Pete, Pete, what would you have to, what would you need to do to to shave a one eyebrow? I'm not putting, I'm not shaving anything in a football game. I'll tell you that right now. Zero. (laughs) That's, that's a pretty bold statement. Britson. how many touchdowns do you think Tom Curran's going to throw in this game? Uh, I would guess zero. So who who cares how confident he is? I'm just saying, just saying, I I, I feel like I want to, I want to hop in here just for a second to, to I will let, not an eyebrow to let Pete know, you know, during the off season that I challenged Brinson to a uh, loser shaves their head bet me and him. And it was Carson Wentz related. And he refused. We, we think it's because of the hair plugs, but I, I just wanted <laughs> Pete to know that. Yeah. The razor wouldn't go through them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I, I'm not shaving my hair and then it doesn't come back or it comes back curly or something like that. I'm just not doing it. I buzz my hair once in high school. It's never happening again. It's, just, it's too much. Well, hair. Now we know when we hold you next time we see you, we hold you down and we cut your hair. I'm going to shave your eyebrows or you're asleep, old man. you wake up <laughs> bald, bald all over. It's going to be the, it's going to be the Will Brinson back into the, back into the covered football again on the road initiation. We're going to just, because we haven't seen you on the road since when combine a year, two years ago, probably no Super Bowl in Miami. Combine was after that. Oh, you didn't go to the combine. There wasn't a combine. Oh, there was a combine. I didn't go to the combine. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I hadn't been, I hadn't traveled. I don't think I've left my house since since uh so I've been in this little box. I've been in this box three years now. Initiation. Bye bye hair. (laughs) Shave my hair. I'll kill you. You can you can you can you can use this as evidence against me in prosecuting me for Pete's death if he shakes my head. I'm more than happy with that. Uh all right, we only have one game in the parlay, by the way. Are we have we had Pete? Do you like the pan? You, do you like the Panthers enough to put them in there? No. Okay. Um, Steelers. Yeah, Steelers for sure. Let's put the Steelers. Let's put the Steelers in there. So we got the Bears minus two and a half. Steelers minus five and a half. We're gonna we'll find one more here in these last few games. The Rams minus three and a half at the Colts. The over under is forty seven and a half. I had a fascinating stat here. Frank Reich is 0-4 in his career in week one with the Colts. And he's 3-0 and in week two. And the, the games don't make any sense. He's lost to the Jaguars, the Chargers, and the Bengals in week one. He's beaten the Vikings, Titans, and, and Washington football team. And he, and he like horrible losses in week one and then blowout wins two out of three in, in week two. Carson Wentz, your boy Debo, 14-27 and against a spread since he came back from that ACL. That's the worst of any quarterback in football the Rams are nine and three straight up and against the spread in Eastern time zone games under Sean McVay. And last week with two 50 yard completions from future hall of famer, Matthew Stafford matched their total for 50 yard completions from 2020. It was also the most in the NFL and they ran it up, ran it up to 36 and zero with a halftime lead under Sean McVay. Can they get it done in Indianapolis, Pete? Yes, they can. And uh, I was really disappointed in, the Colts defense. And and when you watch them, there were guys flying open all the time. And, and, and the other thing is Seattle's pass rush, which came into the game with major questions, got after the quarterback and the offensive line was a disappointment as well. So you couple that with the two things that the Rams do well, throw the ball down the field and they get after the quarterback with Donald on the interior and, and freeze up those other guys. 
I think they're going to have tough sledding. Normally, I would love the Colts in this spot because I think the Rams kind of are an overlay because of what happened on Sunday night. But watching the Colts on tape, I was disappointed. So I'll, I'll take the Rams minus the points. Yeah, my lean would be to the Colts, but I'm a little hesitant to play him for those reasons that Debbie was saying. I thought Wentz played well, considering his season prep was interrupted a couple times, you know, first by the surgery, then the COVID list. Uh, Rams D had trouble with David Montgomery last week. You know, the Colts, they're going to look like they're they're running a lot of the offense through the running backs, so that could bode well for, uh, poorly for them in this matchup, and the 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 Colts offense could play better than we think. Um, Colts still dealing with those injuries, though. I like their chances a lot better if Xavier Rhodes and Darius Leonard play, but both have been missing practice. Um, if either's gone, you know, it's a stay away for me, but if both are in, I think the defense can do enough where it's a three-point game and, and the, the Colts cover, but I'm not looking to play it until I know more about those injuries. Yeah, so you see, this to me is exactly the problem I'm having with these spreads this week. I look at this number, you know, the, the public reaction is going to be, okay, Indianapolis stunk at home against the Seahawks. The Rams looked really good and ran up the score against the Bears, even if they, you know, maybe the, the final number wasn't as indicative of how they played entirely. And everybody's going to want to bet the Rams. And so this is such an obvious veer spot towards the Colts catching three and a half at home. But as you guys, what you guys are pointing out is exactly, exactly my problem. They, they struggled against stopping interior pressure against the Seahawks. And now they're getting Aaron Donald. They Xavier Rhodes and Darius Leonard are major factors in that, in that, in that defense. If those two guys are out, it's a concern. I believe Quentin Nelson's on the injury report too. If he's out, Aaron Donald's going to feast. Carson Wentz might Carson Wentz might be retiring by next Monday. Debo's dream of Carson Wentz winning something or ever being good again might be over before it began if if Quentin Nelson's out. So I want to take the Rams, but it feels so square that I'm just going to stay away from this game. Another game where a team looked awesome in week one and is favored on the road against a team that looked like complete dog crap in week one. The Broncos, minus six at the Jaguars, over under 45 and a half. Teddy Bridgewater, 22 and three against the spread. That is the best in NFL history for a quarterback. The Jaguars, 16 straight games, allowing 24 points or more, the most in NFL history. And Trevor Lawrence suffered his first ever regular season loss of his life, Pete. Can the Jaguars bounce back here? No, they can't. They're (laughs) sloppy. They look poorly coached. Uh, they didn't have any rhythm to what they wanted to do. They threw the ball on 10 straight passes other than one run that was called back. That was a called run that was called back uh, with a rookie quarterback making his first start on the road. That's just, you know, as much as I love the pass, that's ridiculous. And I think defensively they have major issues. That Denver defense is nasty. Vaughn Miller, and if Chubb plays, and that's the big question here, but if, if he doesn't, if it's Malik Reed or whoever, those Jaguar tackles have gotten worse. Uh, They've regressed, and I think the quarterback's going to get hit in this game. Uh, I don't like laying big numbers on back-to-back road games, uh, but I'll lay it here. I don't love it, but I would take the Broncos. Yeah, Urban was like, we better not be passing it 51 times a game. I'm like... Go ahead and tell it to the head coach then. I don't know what you what you want me to do about that. Why, why are you telling us? You know, you're the guy that makes the decisions. Um, yeah, look, I'm supposed to like Jacksonville here. Look, head was then for minus three. Um, typically in the situation, I'd be Oliver Jacksonville. I want no part of this team. They're terrible. Um, I didn't get good vibes from Urban Meyer during the run-up to the season. Sure enough, his team was not ready to play in week one. Um, I underrated Denver heading into the year. Judy's a big loss. Guys like Tim Patrick, KJ Hamler can win their matchups against the secondary. I have no, no worry about Denver moving the ball. Probably not going to look to play this game uh, just because that line's too inflated for me. You can think about teasing Denver down. I'd be fine with that. Uh, second straight game out East. It might be a tough spot for them. I'd maybe look to the under. Just I think that defense, that Denver defense is the best unit in this game. Um, but that that's the only way I'd be looking to play this. Yeah, I, I agreed completely. I mean, that that's, a, again, I, I, that is the theme this week is there are obvious spots where there should be value with these teams at home who look terrible in week one that are getting more points than we thought that they would two weeks ago. But you just cannot take Jacksonville. Urban Meyer came out and had to deny after one week of coaching the Jaguars that he was going to leave. Like the Jaguars PR had to get, had to like set up a report, I think, and blatantly set up a reporter. To, so uh, Urban, I, I, I don't know who it was. So I don't want to insult somebody that's nice in Jacksonville, Pete. Maybe you do. But, the, you know, whoever it was said, comes out, I was like, uh, just want to give you the opportunity to deny the report that you're interested in USC. And Urban goes, uh, Urban's like, I, I'm, not happened at this time. And he starts mumbling and won't make eye contact, which, you know, I mean, those are two of the biggest 
tenants to 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 make sure that everyone believes you when you what you're what you're saying. I don't think he's not be. leaving. No, of course he's not. He's not leaving. But the fact that he has to uh, is asked about it, and the fact that now, I mean, wh- how do you think these veteran players are responding to the idea that that Urban Meyer is having to deny this 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 situation in the first place? These guys are rallying around Urban all of a sudden, right? What veteran well, players? Um, yeah, well, not only that, he said he said in preseason the players will play for the coach. Uh, no, they don't. They play for their their almighty dollar. That's what they play. They play for the paycheck. You you take that money when you go to Jacksonville. You're not you're not going to win titles. You take anymore. the money in the NFL. Period. It's all about right, the money. But, but specifically in Jacksonville, I mean, those guys that signed there, they're not they they didn't think they were coming to a winner. I don't think. No. No. So I mean, I, I just don't, yeah, I just think this game's just a stay away. I want to take the Broncos. I like the idea of the Broncos in a teaser. I mean, I will say that the Jaguars have major backdoor potential, I think. Right, RJ? Just because they're going to be chucking it around? Yeah, if the, you know they can win their matchups on, on those receivers. But who, who knows, you know, with the, the secondary of, of Denver looking pretty good. So, yeah, you would think so. But, I mean, if you're going to have a backdoor potential, shouldn't it be? Or if you're going to look good in the, the second half, shouldn't it be against the defense like the Texans, which nobody expected anything out of? They still got their doors blown off in that game. So I, I don't know that I can expect much from Jacksonville kind of in any scenario at this point. Um, all right. Let's uh, – so I guess we can pick up the pace if Pete's – Pete's – Pete's <laughs> Pete's, <laughs> Pete's texting me. Let's go. Falcons at the Buccaneers. Bucks minus 12 and a half. <laughs> when we do it here. Over under 52. Again – Another game where one team won their game in week one. They're the Super Bowl champs. They got Tom Brady. The other team looked terrible. I just don't know how you get behind the Falcons here, Pete. And nor am I. I I watched their game. My gosh, their offensive line was awful. And the Eagles just dominated them. Um, I I will take the Bucs minus the points. I don't love it because it's a huge number in a division game, like RJ said earlier. Uh, it's hard to lay those big numbers in the division game, but there's no way in hell I'm taking the Falcons. And I, I think when you look at Tampa Bay's defensive line against that offensive line, major mm-hmm. mismatch. And then you go to the passing game to the to the corners, that's a major mismatch as well, and no pass rush. So I'll take the Bucs and lay the points. I was down in Atlanta heading into the season. Boy, did they meet that expectation in week one. But they had no trouble scoring on the Bucks defense in two late meetings last year. And they didn't have Julio in either of those games either. So uh, I don't know that they're necessarily just going to be shut out of scoring points just because of the matchup. Bucks coming on long rest after playing Thursday. Have to figure they light up the bad defense. My lean would be to the over uh, at 52. I think it's a little light just considering the how those games went last year. Um, my only worry is that Arthur Smith gets stubborn and keeps running the ball against this elite front because he ran the ball way too much in week one. Um, so if he doesn't adjust his his philosophies when he needs to um, in the right matchups, then that's definitely a problem for your head, your new head coach. That's two games into his tenure. Um, but but we'll I'll have confidence he'll throw it a little more, and this will go over. Um, but it's only a lean for me right now. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a good look. I, I mean, if Arthur Smith coaches like this the whole year, it is it's yeah, it's going to be a problem. But he leaned in. They were getting blown out by the Eagles. He leaned in. He's trying to establish the run down eighteen points. It was embarrassing. Uh, I got I got no bets here either. But I, I like that overlook as well. RJ, or at least at the very least, Buccaneers team total here. Vikings at the Cardinals. Cardinals minus three and a half. The over under 50 and a half. Vikings 12, four and one to the over since the start of 2020. Is there any chance that, that Mike Zimmer actually has a defense going? Because it doesn't look that way, Pete. Well, they didn't look good last week. I mean, they, against the Bengals and, and that was a concern. And when you watch Mixon run the way he did, they, they did not look good up front. I thought they would be better, uh, particularly with those two big defensive tackles. I think this is a game where the numbers probably inflated uh, a little bit. Maybe it'd be a two or something on a normal week. But after Arizona looked so good last week, uh, Minnesota is still talented on defense. But again, I'm not taking the Vikings and Kirk Cousins on the road in the game they have to have. So I'll, I'll lay the three and a half. I don't love it, but I would lay the three and a half. Yeah, you're right. It, it, it you know it was inflated. It was four and a half, and smart people jumped on the Vikings because that's just too many. At three and a half, it's it's going to be a stay away. It's just going to be a lean for the Vikings um, under the rule of fading the extremely good Week One performances and backing what I think could be a good team after you know, they got upset by a bad team. So people will be down on the Vikings, but but you, we saw that number that should have been out there four and a half, and it got bet down pretty quickly. Um, so we'll have to see how much of Arizona's defensive performance translates week in and week out. Um, maybe it's just Tennessee's offensive line is a mess. Um, I also think Minnesota wants to slow down this game. 
after having 75 offensive plays last week. So under may be a way to look here. Uh, my gut feeling, though, even at two at three and a half, it's still you know point a half point or a point too high. But maybe Arizona is much better than we thought. So I would lean to the Vikings, hoping it's a three point game. But I, I don't love it. Yeah, don't I don't really want anything to do with this. I, if I was going to do anything on this game, what I would want to do is live bet the over if Arizona has a lead because I that will pull Minnesota into a game where they're throwing more. I think they can throw on Arizona, whose cornerbacks are really thin, especially with Thielen and Justin Jefferson. Arizona will keep winging the ball around. If it turns that, I think that formula where Arizona has a lead, Minnesota forced to throw could turn into a shootout. So look for that on a live over bet. Finally, Monday Night Football. Oh, Aaron Rodgers looked like crap last week. He is going to be angry when the Lions come to Lambeau as an 11-point favorite over under 48, Pete. There's a lot of history in play here for the Lions in this game to take the points. Um, but this isn't one of those for me. I, I just can't do it with you know, with Akuda being out and, you know, Rodgers steaming after last week and the Packers offense laying a big fat egg in Jacksonville against the Saints. I think they bounce back here. I don't love it, though, because, again, because of the history of the Lions covering this. Uh, but I will lean to the Packers. I just don't love it. Detroit covered last week because San Fran didn't play a full 60 minutes. You're not going to get that out of the Packers. The Packers are, are going to be hungry on national TV to show that they're not the team that they were in week one. So uh, Rodgers is going to come out and light it up. The defense is going to be you know on the top of their game and play a full 60 minutes too. And so I don't know how Detroit moves the ball consistently. I don't know how they stop Aaron Rodgers. Um, so if this line is 11 is a lot. I can't see Detroit pulling off an outright win. So if you swing at 11 points the other way, I, I don't think Detroit wins this game. Um, I could certainly see a 41-10 type of final score. So you know, it kind of makes me you think 11 is the way to go it's a little too high it's divisional you know i'm just going to lean but um but I, I think you know if you want to tease it down that's fine if you want to tease it with the over because i think that Packers are going to score a ton of points that's fine too 11 just a little bit too much to make it a best bet for me the panthers and the texans are playing on thursday i was just trying to think of a teaser that you could do for a monday thursday teaser um I don't know if that's necessarily it. But yeah, I mean, it, it's just, it's a lot of points. I expect the Packers to come out angry, to wing the ball around. Maybe you take Packers first half or, or something like that. Uh, but yeah, not, not a, not a, it's Monday Night Football. We're probably going to bet it. Uh, well, if you, if you want more DFS gambling info, uh, you should listen to me and Tyler Sullivan every Monday and Thursday. We'll break that game down. I have no play on this. Are we okay with just a two game parlay? Or we can, Why don't we, put the, we can put the Bucks over in that parlay if you want, because you guys liked it. Hmm. Be okay with that. Steelers under maybe as a play. Well, we have the Steelers in the parlay, so you can't have two what? the same game yeah. twice. Okay. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Are you, what do you want to do? Steelers under. I like the Steelers under. Yeah, I do too. Either okay. one of those is fine on me. Pete can make a make a decision. Put the Steelers under it. That's fine. All right. So we'll do Steelers minus five and a half. Steelers under forty seven, and the Bears minus two and a half. That is the the can't lose parlay here on the Pick Six podcast. It actually turns out it can lose because it lost in week one. Last year, it just won a bunch out of the gate. So that's why it was the can't lose par. Or do. Or do. Yeah. <laughs> that's how far lays work. You're due. Uh, here are Pete Prisco's best bets. Texans plus five and a half and the over. Titans. Uh, Titans. Excuse me. Titans plus five and a half and the over in that game, 54. The Texans plus 12 and a half. The Eagles plus three. Bears minus two and a half. Bills minus three. Chargers, Cowboys over 55 and a half, although Pete says he would take it up to 94. The, and, uh, RJ's best bets. Steelers minus five and a half versus the Raiders. Raiders, uh, Steelers under 47. Bears minus two and a half. 49ers minus three. A little head to head there with Pete and RJ. Panthers plus three and a half. Cowboys plus three and a half. And a Seahawks Steelers teaser. My best bets are the Bills minus three and a half. The Patriots minus six. Panthers plus three and a half. Cowboys Chargers over 55. 49ers Eagles over 50 and the Raiders Steelers under 47. I also added in the Steelers minus five and a half. Look at me type in that in live time. All right. That's it. That's the show. We got a full show of Pete Prisco. The people will be excited. It's quick, snappy to the I got to get off here so I can send Jamie Eisenberg my pictures of the food. I'll see you on the text thread. RJ, as always, a pleasure, my friend. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe, like, and review. Smash that like button on YouTube. See you guys. See ya.